Well, we're here at the CCA workbench. Dave, tuna fishes is something that you know a fair amount. Fair amount, fair amount. You know, you like catching I, them I like to eating catch them? tunas, and I, I like to, usually I'm trying to catch them for bait, I'll be honest with you, because <laughs> the ones I don't use for bait, I eat. But, but I, look, I do like to catch them. When and, you use a tuna fish for bait, you're fishing for some big Correct, stuff. you're marlin fishing then, usually. Um, or you're catching a big yellowfin. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when, for you have to go a long ways to get tuna fish in Texas. You know, you, 100 miles a lot of times. You got to be in, you know, 1,500 feet of water to catch yellowfins usually. Uh, the floating rigs out there are probably your best bet, you know, to go out there on those floating rigs, those oil and gas rigs out there because, you know, all night they got those lights on and they're, you know, bait fish come to those things. They're little bits of oasises out in the middle of a big empty. The ocean is a big empty. And when you find those little bits of life, uh, that's where the bait will be, and then that's where the predator fish will be. So, you know, the best best chance of, of catching these fish is trying to start on a structure of some sort. And, you know, I like to troll for them. You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of baits and stuff that you can use. One thing you have to remember when you're fishing for tuna fish, though, is that they're very... Uh, visually oriented, they got really good eyesight. They're really color specific sometimes, way more than any other fish, I believe. Uh, and and they're also very size specific feeders sometimes. Like you'll be a, a lot of times, you'll be out there and you'll see uh, tuna fish busting on the surface and just going crazy eating. And you'll come pulling through there with your big ballyhoos, and you don't get a bite. Nothing. And you're and you're wondering, you know, wow, you can see all these tunas, even big ones. You know, they're eating these, you know, eating something. But usually what they're eating is something really small and that's what they want to eat. So when you come dragging a big, you know, a big feather, even a feather this big, sometimes you're not going to get a bite. But if you come through there with some really heavy uh, 60 pound leader and a really, a really strong triple X little uh, live bait hook in a, in a little uh, squid like that with a weight in it, enough to keep it in the water, a lot of times that's enough to trigger a bite. Even a big tuna fish will eat little tiny stuff like that. I mean, I've seen tuna fountains over little tiny uh, little squids this big or uh, little puffer fish. You know, they will they would just pile on little things. So you don't have to you know you don't have to be all oh I can only catch a big tuna fish if I'm using big stuff because you know you want usually what you're going to want to do is you want to go down in size first you know to get the bite. And, and that means with your leader too. You know, sometimes, you know, it, it'd be nice if we could use 80 pound, but, and especially if you're catching big tunas, so you can really put the heat on them. But a lot of times you have to go down to 40 pound or 50 pound to get the bite. And then you have to be a little, you know, a little leery with them and, and take care of them because they really fight hard. Now, uh, blackfin tunas, which you can catch them out there in the deep as well. They bite really good at night. Uh, squid, you know, you use a piece of squid to catch them, uh, cut bait, uh, drifting along a, a, if you find a nice weed line out there in the middle of the night, uh, doesn't, it doesn't even have to be near a rig, but you know, if you mark uh, tunas or, or, or the thermocline, you want to keep your baits right above that thermocline. You know, sometimes, you know, everything comes up during the night. Everything comes up, swordfish, everything. There's a big, vast migration uh, from top to bottom in the middle of the night. So the tunas really start feeding really good at night, even yellowfin tunas. So if you're out there with your baits right above that thermocline, uh, you're gonna get a bite out of them. So what, can, how, what are you gonna do? You're gonna catch some live baits? Yeah, you know, use some sabiki rigs, you know, if you're out there on, a, on that uh, a big floating rig or something, you'll see the bait around and you'll mark them on your screen and they'll eat sabikis usually. Uh, little jacks, uh, any kind of white baits that are out there. Uh, if you want to catch a great big tuna though, a big tuna, like a, like a three or four pound tuna is a good bait for a big tuna. You know, a three or four pound skippy or even a little blackfin tuna, you bridle him up and put him out there. If you see 110 pound tunas jumping around or 150 pound tunas, a hundred pound tuna can eat a 10 pound tuna. You know, they're about, they're almost like a billfish, about 10% of their weight they can eat in one bite. So, you know, they can, they can take a pretty good sized bait. But a lot of these blackfin tunas, you don't have to go as far. You know, you can, in the, especially during the spring and the summer times when the shrimpers are out there, you can get up on the shrimping boats and, and get behind those shrimp boats and, and, and start chumming 
as, as they're chumming and you can move those fish from their boat to yours. And once you do that, once you get the fish chumming up behind your boat, then you can pick out the black fins from the bonitas and whatnot and start feeding them individual fish. You know, you can throw poppers at them, you can throw a fly at them. When you got them all boiled up behind the boat, those little jigs work great for them when they're doing, when they're up and, and eating in that, all that chum and stuff. It's, it's, and they're so much fun. You're gonna have to, you know, make sure you have some pretty stout gear when you're catching, you know, tunas or 30 pounds and up. And, you know, this, you know, big spinning, uh, spinning reel with 30 pound braid on it will be plenty, you know, because you're usually not putting more than 10 pounds of drag on it with a spinning reel anyway. Yeah, so the, the Akuma Azor with 80, right. 80, this is, I think this is a 65, but we would use an 80 normally. Correct. Loaded up with some suffix 832. Would you say 65 or 80 pound braid? I, you know, I like to use 65 pound because I, you're never going to put that much drag to break 65 pound braid, you know, right. not with a spinning reel. So use as light as you can again to try to get the bite. Make sure you put a top shot of mono and then go to your fluorocarbon so that you have a really good uh, stealthy approach because they they can see really well. All right, stealthy approach. I that knew. would be all about our blonde girl over there. What I do you think? I knew that was 